This week on ANN, Charles E. Bradford, the first president of the North American Division, passes to his rest. The president of the North American Division makes a statement on the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States. And in North Columbia, the Adventist Church helps dozens of needy families start small businesses. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, Charles E. Bradford, the first president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in North America, passed away on Thursday, September the 9th in Huntsville, Alabama. He was 96. In 1979, Bradford was elected to succeed Neil C. Wilson as president of the North American Division. Wilson, who served as a vice president in the General Conference with responsibility for North America, moved on to become president of the General Conference. Bradford, the first African-American to serve as NED president, and his administrative team were instrumental in the region's development towards functioning as a division territory of the Adventist Church. Bradford joined the North American Division after serving as Associate Secretary of the General Conference from 1970 to 1979. He served as NAD president until 1990. The current president of the Adventist Church in North America, G. Alexander Bryant said, Elder Bradford was a spiritual giant among us. The impact of his legacy and ministry can never be fully measured or ascertained. It continues in the lives of generations of leaders, pastors, and members who have been influenced and inspired by his life. He always encouraged us to excel in our God-given talents and assignments. Bryant added, Elder Bradford had a rare collection of passion, grace, power, and humility. He made an incalculable impact on our lives, on our church, and on our world. Indeed, a prince of Israel has passed away, but his legacy lives on. President of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Ted and C. Wilson, said of Bradford, Elder Bradford was a giant in so many ways, faithful follower of Christ, wonderful preacher, diligent Bible student, dynamic intellectual, experienced administrator, caring pastor, loving husband and father, encouraging brother in Christ, longtime friend. On behalf of the world family of Seventh-day Adventists, Nancy and I wish Mrs. Bradford and the family our warmest regards, Christian sympathy, and deepest condolences. May the comforter come especially close to the entire Bradford family at this time of sorrow. Bradford, a graduate of Oakwood University, was awarded a Doctor of Divinity degree from Andrews University. He is the author of several books, including The King is in Residence and Sabbath Roots, The African Connection. The president of the Adventist Church in North America, G. Alexander Bryant, called for prayer ahead of the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks that took place on September 11, 2001. That morning, Two hijacked planes flew into the North and South Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, New York. A third hijacked plane flew into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and a fourth plane was forced down by brave passengers just over Shanksville, Pennsylvania. 3,000 people were, were killed, including all the passengers on board the four planes. People inside the two World Trade Center towers, the Pentagon, and first responders. In his statement, Bryant said, as we remember how life in the United States and around the world changed 20 years ago when 3,000 lost their lives in terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001, as planes crashed through the World Trade Center in New York, the Pentagon, in Virginia, and the field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, I urge our members in North American Division to pray for those who are impacted by these events and lost loved ones on that day. We remember the first responders, many of whom gave their lives in service to their fellow human beings. We also remember the brave passengers on United Flight 93 who sacrificed their lives to, to save others. I encourage us to remember the hope God gives us. He will sustain us and provide us with peace. May we also remember this promise. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. 
Dozens of Seventh-day Adventists throughout the Atlantic coast of Columbia recently benefited from specialized entrepreneurial workshops to assist them in providing for their families during the pandemic. The program included the development of skills and acquisition of tools to help the entrepreneurs carry out their projects successfully, thanks to the support of Baranoa's Mayor's Office and the National Learning Service. The event allowed participants to come up with business opportunities and move their ideas forward, as well as design entrepreneur proposals. Some 50 members met at the Philadelphia Adventist Church in Baranoa, while 100 more families took part in the online training program on August 15th. At the end of the full day of entrepreneurial training, participants received products and financial support to assist with their selected projects and business ideas. The program was also overseen by the church leadership of the Atlantic Columbian Conference. The most vulnerable families were selected from the 10 Adventist congregations in the district to be part of the specialized entrepreneurial project, which included welding, small beauty shops, mini grocery stands, and more. Depending on each project or micro enterprise, the church assisted with money as well as supplies. President of the Atlantic Columbian Conference, Josue Torres said, it's important to receive a spiritual blessing, but besides the spiritual blessing, our father also has a special benefit in our life. Torres said that leaders are looking forward to seeing members reactivate their economic situation in the region. And projects like these can be replicated across other districts and the church in North Colombia. In Brazil, Biblical lands are opened up in a children's animation inspired by the writings of Seventh-day Adventist Church co-founder Ellen G. White. Another season of Nick's gift animation is available on Feliz 7 Play, the Brazilian Seventh-day Adventist Church's video platform. This time, it features a trip through biblical lands. Since the first season, Nick has been immersed in the life and work of American writer Ellen White. His grandmother presented him with five books from the Conflict of Ages series. Nick already knew incredible stories, but after he and his family read the books, The Chosen Ones and The Anointed Ones, it was time to explore The Deliverer, which talks about the life of Jesus and the places he passed through during his earthly life. For Adolfo Suarez, director of Ellen White Estate in South America's headquarters, telling the history of the denomination and the Bible itself is essential to maintaining the identity of the church. He says, Introducing our roots to the little ones is a guarantee that they will know the history of their church and thus begin to appreciate it. Value is only given to what is well known. According to him, the main objective of projects like this is to cultivate a new generation that, in addition to loving the church, loves the God of the church. Young participants of the Adventist Voluntary Service Project of the Central Bolivian Mission and the One Year in Mission team from the Bolivian Union held an eye health fair in the town of Loma Linda in Cochabamba, Bolivia. More than 160 people were cared for by the 32 volunteers who checked vital signs and performed eye exams. Volunteers also taught visitors about the eight laws of health, gave them information about the COVID-19 vaccine and distributed missionary books to each person that they served. In this group of young people, there were doctors, ophthalmologists, nutritionists, optometrists, and nurses, and they gave away 200 pairs of eyeglasses. As a result of this event, 40 people agreed to receive a visit from a missionary, 15 agreed to study the Bible, and 90 agreed to pray together. When the pandemic hit, many of us had to figure out new ways of doing things safely. This led to innovation that will continue even after COVID-19 is gone, including the hospital bedside. Videographer David Maddox captured how an Advent Health Care team is using technology to keep patients connected to their loved ones. Hey, Johnny. How are you? We've been following this family for over 80 days now. You doing okay today? Yeah. Johnny came to us initially on our cardiac ICU floor. At the time, COVID was very high in volume, so there wasn't any visitors allowed on the floor. The only communication we had was with the doctors. And one of the days I like, broke down because I can't see him, I can't touch him. And one of the doctors suggested the virtual team. 
And I was like, what is that? Do you want to call Tony? Virtual connections. Um, we connect patients virtually to their families. There's Margie. And now we just got to get Tony. Being alone and not in familiar settings is unhealthy. Hi, Tony. Um, so our goal is to be able to connect those patients and bring as much of their home to them as we possibly can. Hey. Martha's here too. The very, very first time that I saw my brother, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was like full of emotions. I'm trying to touch the screen, trying to hug him. Hey! We felt that we were there in the room. It's me! Several of his siblings live out of state. They live in New York. And we were able to connect Johnny with all of his siblings virtually at one point. Just up to you, the hospital staff. I absolutely love what I do. I'm able to go above and beyond every day to make sure that these patients have the connections that they need. We have to sometimes take time and listen to God. If it wasn't for you guys, I won't be able to keep my sanity. You guys are like a family. I will be forever, ever grateful. Thank you. Coming up in Brazil, Adventists work to provide for mothers in their community. We'll be right back after the break. When I first felt called to be a minister, I didn't want to be a typical pastor with a suit and a tie. One of the things I appreciated most about Christ was his ability to defy convention. Once, when I moved away from a place where I was pastoring, one of my friends said, we're going to miss you. You're so unusual. I take that as a compliment. I'm someone who likes a challenge. I love to test my limits. I've been running for more than 35 years, most days of the week. I love to run, especially in nature. It's time alone with God where I can recharge. I run first thing in the morning so I can prepare emotionally and spiritually for whatever I might experience that day. I find my greatest fulfillment in relating to people who aren't Adventist or even Christian. We have to meet people where they are. That's what Jesus did, and it's still our responsibility today. I have friends who are Christians and atheists, gay and straight, old and young, of all races and ethnicities. I'm a biker, a runner, and a pastor. I'm extremely blessed. My name is Stephen Chavez, and this is my whole life. Welcome back. Unquestionably, motherhood is a challenge and it is even more so for women in situations of social vulnerability. To help these families, a group of volunteers from Maringa, Brazil, created a project called Baby Partner. The group focuses on assembling baskets for newborns with everything a baby might need, as well as providing resources to help assist and guide mothers in mental health, legal issues, general health, breastfeeding, and spiritual matters. The project started with Isabella Dancini Pontes, who in was inspired to help struggling mothers after she had her own daughter. Pontes not only sought to donate items of clothing to a specific family, but she also wanted to create a network of volunteers to assist women through various stages of pregnancy and motherhood. Today, more than 50 people are part of the initiative. They search for donations, washcloths, make deliveries, and guide mothers through their needs. Since October 2020, the project has served 145 registered women. Volunteers also offer courses for mothers to learn to perform jobs to help them generate income. Baby Partner is now part of the Adventist Development and Relief Agency. The South American Division sent this report. A Priscila precisou de ajuda quando, depois de quatro filhos, chegou a Arielle. Desempregada, ela recebeu o apoio do projeto chamado Bebê Parceiro, que conseguiu todo o enxoval para a recém-nascida. A família recebeu as doações e muito mais. Muitas vezes não é só você ganhar, você receber a doação do projeto. Uma conversa, uma palavra muda muita coisa pra gente ali. O projeto Bebê Parceiro começou quando a filha da Isabela nasceu e ela quis ajudar mães com dificuldade. As roupinhas da minha filha começaram a ficar pequenas e eu quis fazer uma coisa diferente, poder ajudar mais pessoas do que dar apenas pra uma única pessoa as roupinhas da minha filha. Desde outubro de 2020, os voluntários do Bebê Parceiro já atenderam 145 mães em Maringá, no norte do Paraná. 
As famílias são indicadas pelo Centro de Referência em Assistência Social, o CRAS. Quando as crianças nascem, as mães recebem um kit com tudo o que é essencial para um bebê. Essa é a Olivia, minha filha. E as roupinhas da Olivia que ela não usava ou não servem mais foram doadas para o bebê parceiro. A gente pediu e eles vieram buscar aqui em casa. E agora essas roupinhas já devem estar vestindo outras crianças. Né, filha? É. As doações são separadas, lavadas, muitas vezes reformadas e então usadas na montagem dos kits. São roupas, calçados, acessórios, itens de higiene, kit berço, enfim, tudo o que um bebê precisa. Para os recém-nascidos, o primeiro kit vai nessa caixa decorada. Nós colocamos de 30 até 36 peças. Mandamos o livro é, do ano, né, um livro missionário, e também um estudo bíblico para a mãe. E agora vai também um, uma liçãozinha do rol para as crianças, é, para a mãe já começar né, a... É, ensinar a criança na, no caminho, nos caminhos de Deus, né? Existem os casos especiais que elas mandam a fotinho dos bebês com as roupinhas, né? Isso pra gente é muito especial, né? Elas falaram assim, olha, meu bebê não tinha mais roupa de frio e agora vê as roupinhas e veste a roupinha. Chega, acabou de chegar a roupinha, ela já veste e manda uma foto pra gente. O projeto conta hoje com 50 voluntários. São profissionais de diversas áreas. Então a gente tem psicólogo, assistente social, enfermeiro, é, estagiários de medicina, tem fisioterapeuta, e aí a gente encaminha, orienta, olha, você tem direito a isso, você pode procurar isso em tal lugar. Por causa da pandemia, os atendimentos são feitos por chamada de vídeo. Geralmente, essas mulheres, elas não estão assim, digamos, bem atendidas. É o que nós identificamos, tanto eu quanto a psicóloga, que tem muitas falhas, tem problemas aí psicológicos que precisam ser levantados, precisam ser cuidados antes que essa mulher tenha o bebê. Identificamos aquilo que ela ainda não está bem esclarecida, porque tem uma questão que a mulher chega para o pro profissional de saúde, ela fica intimidada, fica com vergonha, então esses atendimentos deixam elas bem livres, bem leves, e nós conseguimos extrair o máximo de informações para estar tá fazendo os encaminhamentos. A Eide já tinha uma filha de 7 anos e um enteado de 6, quando descobriu que estava esperando os gêmeos, Arthur e Benício, ou seja, tudo em dobro. No começo a gente precisou de uma outra assistência, foi uma cesta básica que a Igreja Adventista nos forneceu. Os meninos estão com sete meses. Já foram muitas peças recebidas e devolvidas no mês seguinte para serem repassadas a outras crianças. Dessa vez, a Laís veio fazer a troca. Então é muito gratificante assim ver essa alegria, ver essa satisfação das mães, conhecer os bebês também. É muito prazeroso. O projeto também tem a ideia de tornar as famílias financeiramente independentes. Então nós temos uma oficina é, e nós trazemos cursos para essas famílias. Para que depois de um ano, porque o projeto acolhe só até um aninho né, o bebê, a família consiga andar sozinha. Né? Recentemente, o projeto Bebê Parceiro foi incorporado à ADRA, Agência Adventista de Desenvolvimento e Recursos Assistenciais. A ideia é expandir. E para isso, precisam de mais voluntários. Saiba como ajudar. A gente tem um WhatsApp e entrando em contato com a gente por esse WhatsApp, a pessoa que atende vai dar as possibilidades, né? tanto de doação de roupinhas, o um ponto de coleta, ou se a pessoa não pode trazer a forma que agendar o, o, o recolhimento dessa doação. Também a gente tem uma chave do Pix para doação. Você pode entrar agora no site da Adra, adra.org.br, procura lá o projeto Paraná Bebê Parceiro, você vai achar facilmente, faça a sua doação. Você também pode se inscrever como voluntário através do site, você pode também conhecer nossas ações aqui do Bebê Parceiro através das redes sociais e se envolver, seja como voluntário, seja como doador, seja como uh, apoio. Para a gente é muito especial poder acolher essa família nesse momento de tão assim, além de ser delicado, especial, de muita dificuldade que essas famílias estão passando, ainda mais nesse período de pandemia. Só tenho a agradecer a Deus por esse projeto, porque é o que está nos salvando. São pessoas extraordinárias, que eu já nem falo que ali é um bebê parceiro, ali é uma família acolhedora. Coming up, Michael Yunker is here for This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Adventist Mission shares the story of an Adventist who worked to meet the needs of refugees in his community. Hi, Viel. How are you? Are you okay? Dear Viel, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. If 
for now. It's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me. Are your hands clean? Yeah! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19. But it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose. <laughs> Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system. The creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Welcome back. Anise is a Seventh-day Adventist who lives in Washington, D.C., but grew up in the country of Jordan. Since living in the United States, Anise decided it was important to reach out to the refugee community in his area. Adventist Mission has more. Jesus called his followers to care for the foreigner and refugee living among us. Adventists all over the world are doing just that. Anis is a Seventh-day Adventist living just outside Washington, D.C. He grew up in the country of Jordan and spends time each year in medical mission there. Since living in the United States, he decided that a single trip each year was simply not enough. He took action to seek out refugee communities in his area to help meet their needs. We used to go out and deliver food supplies to a refugee center in Gettysburg, Maryland. But we never got a chance to meet those families. Anise realized that in order to have a larger impact, he needed to get to know these families face to face. The uh, personal interaction is very important because here as refugees from a foreign country, they have no relatives or families, you know. So this has become a personal touch with them. And to build the relationships and build the bridges, they have become our friends. And one of the Syrian refugee children was telling her mother, Mom, I like it when the church come and visit us. Anise and others have combined community, relationship, and service in a Christ-like way. They visit the many apartment homes of the refugee families and bring them items that the families may need. This has been a great way to show these families that the Adventist community truly cares about them. This has become part of my ministry. With, uh, we gather food supplies and cleaning supplies as needed, and we deliver to our friends who have come from a foreign land. We bring, you know, rice, olive oil, cooking oil, lentils, uh, laundry detergent, and other cleaning supplies. This work has helped many refugee families feel more comfortable. But just like Jesus' ministry here on Earth, Anissa's mission is to build genuine connections. The primary focus of our relationship is to be their friends. And also, during the pandemic, we have kept that personal touch, even if we haven't come to see them. I constantly on the phone talking to them every week just to see how they are, be of encouragement to them. And that has meant a lot to me personally. Anise and many others are continuing to embrace the calling of Jesus to love and care for their neighbors who are foreigners and refugees. Please pray for Anise and his friends to continue finding ways to serve these vulnerable communities and find even more ways to show Jesus' love.
Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Michael Yonker for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about the life of religious freedom advocate and Bible teacher, John Orr Corliss. This week in Adventist history, we remember the life and ministry of John Orr Corliss, who died September 17, 1923. John Corliss was born to Joseph and Jane on December 26, 1845. Sadly, Joseph passed away in 1850 when John was just five years old. Later, his new adopted father treated him harshly, causing John to apprentice as a sailor at the age of 16. While serving as a sailor, however, he became interested in Christianity around 1862, though he was not baptized at that time. This was just as the Civil War was beginning, and after marrying his wife, Susan, he enlisted in the Union Army, serving in the 30th Regiment of the Maine Infantry. After the war, he returned to Maine, where he was officially baptized by a Free Will Baptist minister in 1866. Tragically, however, his young wife, Susan, passed away shortly thereafter in 1867. It was during the time of his grieving the loss of his uh, first wife that he met James and Ellen White, who were doing evangelism in the area with John Andrews. Cordes felt inspired to accept White's invitation to join them in Michigan, and there he learned more about the Seventh-day Adventist faith. James White baptized him again in 1868. That same year, he became the chaplain for the Battle Creek Health Reform Institute and remarried Julia Ann Burgess, a school teacher. In 1871, he felt inspired to move full-time into ministry, conducting evangelistic series in Michigan, uh, though without any formal financial support, forcing him and his wife to work day jobs. Eventually, however, his labors were rewarded with support from the church and the prominent pioneers James White, Joseph Wagner, and Stephen Haskell officiated at his ordination. After 1884, he was nominated to go to Australia to do mission service, where he spent a few years in ministry, including helping with the publishing house there. John Corliss concluded his ministry back in the United States, remaining involved and serving the church until his death on September 17, 1923. That is This Week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in-depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember to leave a comment or a prayer request because we have people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. The passage says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.